In this introduction video, we'll talk about what constitutes a modular synth, their history and possible applications. In simple terms, a modular synthesizer is as its name suggests, an audio processor with several modules which can be connected together to create a new sound. The important thing to remember with modular synthesis is the exploratory nature inherent in a modular design. With a good foundation in the fundamental principles, any sound you can imagine can be reproduced. And happy accidents often lead to the unimaginable, which is just as exciting. Patching can be an ephemeral experience. The sound you capture might never be repeated. And I hope you will have many happy hours bleeping confidently after this introduction to the technology. We might just make a rackhead of you yet. You may already be aware of the names Moog and Buka. They're both early pioneers in hardware synthesis. Two very different schools of synthesis are attributed to them respectively. Robert Moog is synonymous with the East Coast subtractive synthesis approach, where harmonically rich sound sources are filtered in a chain that is often fixed or repeated on many manufacturers' devices. It's an approach that might be considered traditional, as it is easy to create an instrument that will play well with other acoustic instruments with Western scales. Don Buchler is associated with the more experimental West Coast scene, where waveform manipulation was less about filtering and more about additive techniques, frequency modulation or complex folding and feedback. On the units themselves, functions were almost obscured by the module names, such as the MARF, a multiple arbitrary function generator, or the source of uncertainty. These early modular synthesizers were large-scale machines, sensitive to temperature or movement and were not mass-produced. It wasn't until the 1990s when Dopfer began manufacturing the Eurorack format, a small-scale modular standard, which came in at a price point that home studios could afford. Modular synthesis became accessible to a larger base of practitioners. And now we have VCV Rack, an open-source community of developers creating modules based on existing designs and innovations that push the form forward, all available for your computer for free. It is certainly a good time to join the party. Anyone who's explored sampling and synthesis understands what an unrestrained art form it is. Any sound, be it generated digitally or acoustically through a hardware device or captured on location, can be manipulated into a new form with a life of its own. The applications are as varied as the techniques employed to create the sound itself and can include any form of media or live performance. A significant benefit of studying modular synthesis is that the fundamentals are present in every fixed architecture hardware or software synth that you will utilise. So you can transfer all your knowledge to any device you are presented with. It's also fun and noisy. So what's included? Here's a brief glossary. Don't worry if you're new to these abbreviations or the concepts. We'll cover each element in detail in their own tutorials but I'd like to take some time to introduce the components we're going to explore. There are fundamental modules which are often found chained together. They include sound sources, the voices or oscillators, filters to remove frequencies, envelope generators to create functions over time, and various ways of modulating parameters, again changing them over time, because time machines. In addition, there are utility and effects modules we can employ to create interesting modulations, sequences of notes or parameter changes, add random or procedural elements, and interface between our input and output sources. If you're going up Everest, take a good coat. Be prepared. Like any discipline, especially those that are creative, a good grounding, diligent practice, and a focused approach are essential to reach the nirvana-like state of fluency with an instrument. Learn some rules so you have some to break. The scope is your friend, by the way. The scope sees things. We'll be seeing plenty from the scope later. If you're entirely new to this, then it's well worth knowing that there is a vibrant community of synthesis the world over, and joining a forum dedicated to synthesis can be a real help in the beginning stages of your relationship with all things modular. I recommend the forum Muff Wigglers. There, I said it. Control voltage is the CV in VCV, virtual control voltage. Imagine a dial, and when you turn it, a sound increases in volume. Imagine a volume dial, that's, that's what I'm saying. 
but now it turns when we send it a voltage and that's great because I've only got two hands so I can only turn two dials so it's lucky that I've got all that voltage knocking around to do the legwork. Imagine a gate. Good, well done. Now open it so the cows can come home. How long did you leave it open for? How many cows did you count? We will use gates to determine when notes play and for how long and for anything else that needs a start point and duration in time. Imagine a gun. Now pull the trigger. It wasn't long before the bullet left the gun, was it? We'll use triggers to start functions at a specific point in time. We've all got to start somewhere, and I'm starting with a simple mono synth. That's a synth that can play one note at a time, like a bass or a lead instrument. We'll go for an east coast approach. It's a great jumping off point, and for those of you looking for the more experimental approaches, you will soon see how understanding the form and function of any module can lead to sonic exploration of any philosophy. We'll go on to look at the VCO, Voltage Controlled Oscillator. This is our voice. We'll take a look at filters. There are a number of types of filter and we'll take a look at the details. We'll explore voltage controlled amplifiers, VCAs. There are endless applications for VCAs. We'll also look at attack, decay, sustain and release as an envelope and we'll be generating envelopes. We'll also look at the low frequency oscillator, the LFO, and that's how we'll manipulate parameters remotely. It's modular, so the possibilities are limitless. It's an experiment that never ends. OK, now it's time, if you haven't done so already, to head over to vcvrack.com, register an account, download the app, install it, and I'll see you in the next tutorial with the software open, building our first patch, beginning with a VCO. And if you have the time, before we begin, you might like to enjoy some modular music. <laughs>